All right, so lately my interest in fighting games has been rekindled, as it so happens sometimes, and I've been wondering, if you were to turn Street Fighter 2 into something like Weapon Lord and equip all the characters with melee weapons, what would they use? I figured that would make for a fun video, so let's have a chat about it. This video is sponsored by World Anvil, a toolset for writers and game masters that won a Gold Any Award for Best Digital Aid in 2019. It helps you build fictional worlds and keep track of their cultures, factions, diplomacy, plots, characters, etc. In the map creation, you can make all your artwork fully interactive with multiple linked layers that go from continent overview to individual regions, cities, and finally rooms or dungeons where you can even place your NPCs, monsters, traps, and whatever else you need. Or entire galaxies if you want to go large-scale sci-fi. It's quite a versatile and straightforward tool set. I can also use it to organize video ideas, notes, and upload schedules, as well as my list of things to review. No, I'm not gonna show you, no video spoilers. You can either keep all your writing private or share it selectively, and Guild membership helps with that by offering privacy settings, a co-author feature, and other tools. But you can try out the main features in the free version of World Anvil and see how you like it. So I'll leave the link in the video description below. Take a look. I'm going to limit this to the original Street Fighter 2, or I suppose Street Fighter 2 Turbo, because that's where the boss characters became playable by default. Uh, simply to scale it down, because otherwise there will be way too many characters to talk about for one video. All right, so first up, good old Ryu. Strong effective fighter, obviously. And you could think, well, he's a warrior type from Japan, so obviously Katana, right? And uh, some or a lot of the samurai mindset obviously applies to him. You know, discipline, honor, self-sacrifice. But samurai were also all about service and loyalty. Now, I would argue he's more about self-improvement than serving others. Not that he's opposed to helping others, not by any means, but his main focus is on he wants to he wants to find something. He wants to realize his potential and all that. And he's humble, but very effective. The staff just seems right for him. For one, he's basically a fighter hobo, so he wanders around a lot with minimal equipment. And a walking stick is pretty useful there. Plus, a staff is less lethal than a sword. I mean, you can easily apply lethal force with it by cracking somebody over the head, but it's easier to do less lethal strikes with it than with a sword. Again, humble but effective staff, absolutely. And it has substantial range. So that's where his zoning comes in. So I think that would suit him really well. What about Ken? It's basically the same fighting style, especially back then. They were the same guy with slightly different look. In later Street Fighter games, he had more of his, his own flavor. But personality-wise, staff just won't cut it for him. So why not a Shaolin Monk Spade? It still shares a lot of similarities with a staff, but it looks flashier and it has blades. I think he needs something fancier because he's just the more aggressive of the two and more of a show-off. So I think this makes some sense. Now, if I didn't want to stick to a staff-like weapon, I would give him dual swords and something nice, fancy looking like side swords. Uh, this looks a little weird. I didn't want to change the sprite too much, so I just put the swords in his hands like that. But either way, uh, that I could personality-wise, I could definitely see that. A Shoryuken with a sword would be a little weird, but it's not like the most down-to-earth realistic move to begin with, and it would probably have flaming blades because it's Ken. For Honda, I wasn't too creative. I mean, he's chunky, powerful, hits hard. So why not a Tetsubo or a Kanabo? Hey, can you get this out of my face, dude? This is basically a metal studded wooden club. They existed in different lengths, single-handed as well as two-handed versions, and um, just makes sense. It has pretty long reach, which he does with his sumo headbutt. You can get you from all across the screen, basically. And he also has some pretty long reaching kicks and punches. Definitely would not want to be in the way of that thing. When I think Chun-Li, I think quick, technical, effective, but also kind of fancy at the same time. So a Jian Chinese double-edged sword is a very obvious choice. 
So probably no surprise here. It's got pretty decent reach. It's versatile, effective, and uh, you can get very technical with it. It's not the most powerful cutter you can have, but it can deliver lightning fast thrusts and cuts. And there's a lot you can do with it, both offensively and defensively. And I was also thinking potentially a deer horn knife or crescent moon knife in the offhand might be useful because she doesn't strike me as a grappler. So the offhand, I mean, there are techniques in Chinese swordsmanship where you use the offhand to support the sword hand. And uh, so it would make sense for her to not have anything in the offhand, but I could also see that being used for parrying and additional attacks. Either way, this makes sense to me. Sorry, Blanca, this is not going to be terribly nuanced. So he has a natural, non-technical, brawler style basically so i wanted a brutal weapon fearsome and i considered the makua huit for a while which is an aztec weapon wooden core with obsidian blades on it uh, that one is vicious but it seemed a little too sophisticated again no offense dude but they're not actually easy to make so i figured how about an antler mattock this is sort of a primitive pickaxe and a very brutal, simple but effective weapon that can you know, penetrate and tear and uh, bash with blunt force as well on the other end. And I think it would be pretty natural for him to swing that around with his ferocious energy. And I think it, it, just, it just looks right in his hand. Okay, Zangief, big, strong wrestler, short reach but devastating power. I want to give him a single-handed weapon so he has one hand free for grappling, obviously, and uh, not hammer and sickle, that would be silly. But I actually found an original Russian mace from 1600 and the flanges on this thing are actually shaped like the heraldic eagle of Russia, so that seemed perfect. And so this thing, basically if you think that Zangiev's command grabs cannot be blocked. This, in the hands of such a beast of a man, basically can't be blocked either. Like, would, would you want to try to statically block this? No way. This is just too powerful. This would just crush your defense. And uh, again, he has a hand free for grappling. Uh, he's weak against long range attacks. You know, in the game, you know, Hadoukens and, and such just give him a lot of trouble. And uh, so same thing with a staff or even a pole arm, you could keep him at bay. He would, of course, try to bull rush you, which is exactly what he tries to do in the game. But if you can keep him at a distance, you can really mess with him because this is not a defensive weapon. He doesn't really have a lot to defend himself against long range pokes. Guile, stern, practical, with a side of flashiness in the form of the hair. Excellent defense. He likes to turtle up and wait for you to come in and then he punishes you with a counter. If you jump at him, there comes a flash kick, things like that. And uh, so soldier type, some no nonsense kind of weapon is needed. Sword and shield is a good way to do that. Very good defense, decent reach with a sword and um, straightforward. You know, that's just the soldier's weapon on the battlefield, offense, defense, it's got it all, so uh, it's kind of a no-brainer. And arming swords can be either very minimalist in style or rather fancy, so we can figure something out for his fabulous hair. Dalson, can you say reach? He can hit you from all the way over there. Since I'm sticking to weapons that are real and practical, I'm not gonna go for some extendable segmented thing like Ivy and Soul Calibur has, for example. So the obvious choice here is spear. He doesn't even fit on the screen without threatening to stab me. So how's that for reach? Now, the problem with this is he moves very, very slowly in the game, whereas spears are rather quick. So you could argue maybe a heavy polearm instead, something like a guandao, but he doesn't necessarily hit that hard. So I still think spear or lance would be the right choice, probably just a heavy version. And uh, yeah, so he really, really keeps you at bay with that. Balrog, hard-hitting boxer. How many of you are thinking 
knuckle dusters or other fist weapons, you know, kestas, gauntlets, claws, etc. Now the problem with that is that will be too much of a disadvantage against everyone else, both in terms of reach and defense. Like try to defend against Zangief's mace with knuckle dusters or, or against a spear or a sword or anything like that. You would just be cut down and stabbed before you can get close. So I'm thinking Pata or Sword Gauntlet and Buckler because he actually has pretty good reach with his punches and his defense is also quite quite good. So that would allow for that, you know, kind of punching style while not sacrificing too much reach and also having good defense against everybody else. So I think he would do pretty well with this combination. Sagat, the king of Muay Thai. This has always been my favorite fighter in terms of gameplay. And he has very powerful ranged attacks, obviously. Not the kind of reach that Dalsim has, but still very good reach. So the Darp Sri Gun Chai seems like a good choice, which is a pole arm from Northern Thailand. And, uh, damn, this guy with his height and that kind of weapon, that would be really difficult to get close to. Now, based on the choice of weapon, I kind of feel bad for Ryu now. I mean, sure, a staff is great and has good reach and everything, but against this, uh, that will be challenging. But obviously fighting Sagat is challenging, so that's, that's fair enough. Uh, how he would manage to give him such a scar with a staff is the other question, but how did he do it with a fist, right? So whatever. Yeah, it makes sense. He hits hard, he hits you from afar. Well, Vega technically already has a weapon, that cheating son of a goat, but I'm not gonna skip him because of that. So, think about what his fighting style is like. It's quick and fanciful, and obviously he has a certain focus on style and presentation. No offense to small sword fencers, but this is the sword that, to my mind, comes closest to embodying vanity. You know, it's, it can be very fanciful in design, you know, very ornate and associated with aristocracy, gentlemen, all of that. Now, I also gave him a parrying dagger because going up against the other weapons with just a small sword would be very difficult because you basically wouldn't have much defense against most of them simply because it's so light, it just doesn't really have the mass to to block anything. You still do deflectional parries and of course evasive maneuvers, which he's very good at. He's agile and fast, but the parrying dagger would just help give him a bit more defense. So I think that makes sense. It would definitely make for a, a fancy, visually pleasing fighting style, but effective and very technical too. Bison, very annoying to fight, hits hard, and uh, he gets you from unexpected angles and uh, well quite a scumbag i think he's the kind of guy who would bring a gun to a fist fight so yeah he's got a pistol on his side there and an axe because axes hit hard and that one isn't terribly long so he doesn't have the most reach but he needs to rush in and get you with that. And uh, that's, that's what he does. He, he's a rushdown character and yeah, he's a cheap bastard. So there you go. Axe and pistol. Kind of pirate-like, which uh, is debatable whether that fits, but yeah, that's just what I went with. Makes sense to me. So yeah, that's all the characters. Uh, let me know what you think. If you like this, I might do this for other fighting games as well, or maybe other characters from later Street Fighter games, things like that. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.